I got two words for you and four syllables. Quarter panel. So let's get started. On a serious note, yes, we are going to be wrapping the quarter panel eventually. I'm going to do the best job possible, considering I do have some damage on the quarter panel from me hitting it, thanks to me falling over on my Harley. I'll put a little card up above, so check that out if you want. It's kind of dumb, kind of stupid, but uh, it was worth a shot. Here's a quick view of the damage, as you guys may know already, but this is what we're working with. I do have it sanded down. The dent's actually protruding out a little bit. There's some high spots, so can't really bondo it. Right? I really don't want to bondo it. I just want to move on. So I won't. I'm not going to. I'm not going to bondo this. Just out of curiosity, I went and slapped on a piece of scrap vinyl here. And it looks like a fat air bubble, just because that's where the fender actually protrudes out. Didn't really think it was going to look good, but I didn't really think it was going to look that bad. What do I do? Gotta hammer that in a little bit? I'm realizing that my vinyl is actually taking off a little bit of my paint. You can see some flakes in there. And what do I do? What do I do? So I actually sacrificed a bigger piece of spare vinyl here just to give me a better idea what it will actually look like. Again, it's just going to be one of those things every time I see it, every time I walk by it, I'm just going to be like, oh man, should have fixed that, but I didn't. Ripperino. Well, you guys aren't going to believe this, but I actually uh, started doing the DIY type of fix. Got myself a good old hammer, and uh, I got myself a punch, a little blue punch. Something you do not use for dent removal or uh, for dent pushing in. But as you can see, obviously the dent's still there, but the bulging area where it was coming out, you can clearly see that I did push it in a little bit. There was just a high spot over here, so I got lucky and got it punched back in. But the bad news is I think I am going to have to spray or something. Add a coat of primer on here because my main coat is just flaking away with this adhesive. And I'm afraid when I go to reposition this huge piece of vinyl for the quarter panel that it's not going to stick back again because it's going to be picking up all this paint chipping off. So yeah, that's some bad news because that means I can't really get too far on this. But you guys know the procedure. It's going to be the same as I did on my front fender and for this area up here. I'll put a card up above in the video and uh, you guys can check it out. I've showed this little process many times. Same old, same old like I've been doing. So I'm going to probably have to do this for this whole area. Sure is a lot of work for a, a damaged fender in the end product, but it is what it is. So let's keep on pushing. Who am I kidding? My car's not even going to be in any car shows in its life. So, I mean, why am I tripping on this? I really don't know, but I am and it's going to bother me. So I'm going to do something about it. So let's do it. Start up for me, one more time, one more time. <laughs> Huffing and puffing, but you just couldn't do it, could you? Okay, fine, I understand, I understand. Been neglected for far too long. Well, that was a fail. I was gonna start my car up to make sure, to be sure that the battery wasn't gonna go dead. And it's dead, I waited too long. Dead battery stranded unwrapped Subaru. What more can you ask for? Okay, we're all done masking up the area that we're gonna paint and Bondo. I sanded down this area a bit more to bare metal. That way the Bondo can adhere like it should. Just a quick test to see if I improved the look at all. But you definitely can still see, you know, some dent presence here. But it's definitely not as bad as far as this area and up. I just wanted to get rid of the big old dent right here. And the rest of it, I'm gonna have to live with it. The painting is finished and now it's time to reveal everything and uh, you know rip off all the masking paper and plastic. 
we'll be getting the sanding. We're gonna be hitting it with 400 grit sandpaper next and getting the area smooth and hopefully some of the dents and some of the damage uh, was covered up. But uh, yeah, we'll check it out and check it out. Check it out, check it out, check it out. We'll check it out, check it out, check it out and uh, see what we get. Came out looking pretty good, not really. I mean, it feels pretty good, but there are obvious dents as you guys can see, but it is slightly better than if I didn't do anything at all. So I'm happy about that. And I'm glad that I actually tried to do it. Maybe I made it look better. I made it look a tad better, let's just say that, but it definitely is not perfect. And this wrap isn't perfect either. So, hey, I guess I'll accept that. It's time to move on. Uh, let's get the tail light out, expose these edges around here where we're gonna be tucking into. And then I'm gonna figure out how to get the bumper off, at least unclipped, that way I can tuck into there. My mud flap has to go. I believe my tire has to come off in order for me to get the mud flap off. But yeah, we got a list of things to do. We gotta remove this inside liner in order to get to the bolts to remove our taillight. One clip, peel it back, uh, expose your nasty wiring that you did, or I did. I did a sweet JDM taillight mod. Uh, check out the video up above. Looks like there's four eight millimeter nuts holding on your taillight. Undo your clip and your taillight should pop out. Here it is, taillight's out. Here to look on the other side. So we're gonna clean up all this in here. Okay, I'm exposing some clips for this back bumper. Shouldn't take much to get it off. with the wheel off and then uh, we're gonna put it back on lower this back down to the ground because I currently do not have any jack stands here so gotta be quick gotta be quick and gotta be dangerous gotta be daring gotta take risks and here's a risk I'm taking all right let's go um, we do have this plastic piece a little insert um, that looks like it's a little cover that does something just holds debris and gunk and junk um, yeah we're gonna get this off it looks like there's a clip here and maybe a clip on the bottom and it should come off. Let's not hit the jack and die. Okay, well I got the one clip out up above here and I wish I was recording because I got it out and it flung and shot all the way to there. Just got the other one out on the bottom and what do you know, that one also shot out way over there. Tried to get away, but I got gotcha. you. Both clips are out. Let's see if this little piece can wiggle out now. See what else is holding it in. Besides the caked up dirt and debris. And the bumper's loose now. So that kind of secures the bumper, it looks like. A bunch of debris rocks. All right, let me figure this out. I'll get back to you guys. Okay, this just in. That black piece on the other side actually curves up and under. And it's quite a bit bigger than I was expecting. It looked like it was just a small little trim piece over there. But on the back side, obviously, it continues all the way down. And we have two more clips here, so I can barely see that one under the dirt. And another one there. Let's pop this off and see what else we can expose. Okay, here we are, back again. One more clip over there. One more clip over there. And our trim piece is out. Let's see what it was hiding back here. A whole lot of empty space, that's about it. Now it does actually secure the bumper. You can see how flimsy it is now. So I'm happy that wasn't a waste of time. One more trim piece to get off to get all these edges free. Uh, we had a little screw rivet here, screw rivet, whatever you want to call it. So I just popped that off and then we're going to have our basic clip on the bottom. No, never mind. Another screw rivet, screw rivet. And both of them have been stripped so far, so that's been fun. Again, this may be a waste of time because I could probably just go like this, tuck the vinyl in, no problem. But I'm going above and beyond. I mean, you could do it either way and have the same results, but I'm choosing to do it this way. There you have it, trim pieces off. Moving on. And we do have two clips here, one there, one there. Under the bumper, we do have one more clip there. And that's all I really see for now. Hopefully that'll be enough to at least get this side unhooked so I can tuck the edges like I said before. Don't forget about this little 10 millimeter nut too, as well. Boom, got the nut out. It's not a nut after all, it is a screw with a nut on it. That's weird. Okay, this just in. Don't go prying on this just quite yet. Okay, okay forget what I just said, what I just mentioned. Um, that clip does not have to come out. 
what has to come out is this 10 millimeter bolt. Once I loosen that up, got it out, um, the bumper pretty much started to fall off. Just goes to show you, this is my first time doing this and uh, I should probably do it first before trying to teach others. So this doesn't have any type of weird clip going on, like the front bumper where you pull it and you think you're gonna break it. Comes off pretty easy. Again, we're just gonna pop off where this seam is here. We're not gonna take the whole bumper off right now because I'm really just targeting the quarter panel, as you guys know. I'll try not to crack the other half of the bumper. All the edges are exposed. Now it's time to clean, 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 and clean some more. Get a little GoPro first head, GoPro POV action right here. Uh, we're just laying it down as you guys are seeing in the time lapse. So we're just uh, working our way. We got our main main piece, our main body line laid down. I just uh, glassed it along the whole area. This way first, that way, and then I'm working my way down towards this area. Let's work the air out. Nice and easy. Just have my fingers up under the vinyl and just kind of working it. All right, all right. I'd say the hard part is over for this quarter panel. Um, I did pretty well. I almost ran into some fingers down at the bottom corner here. I just had to use a little bit of heat and it took care of the fingering there. So I almost laid it without any heat at all, which is a huge milestone for me. There aren't any major issues yet. Um, it is still early and the future's looking bright. My main focus was to get this area all the way around this bend nice. I didn't want it to be hanging out with all this tension and a little bit of fingers on the end. Um, I hear you can actually get some adhesive lines if you just leave the vinyl under pressure or under tension. If you leave the vinyl under tension, you can get the adhesive lines or like little fingers that'll stay there. So I made sure to actually glass out all the way to the edges. Whew, so a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders as far as this quarter panel. I've been dreading this quarter panel for a long time and I'm glad that I actually tackled it and it's turning out okay. Let's keep the good vibes going and continue. So I'm just doing some tucking now and pretty much tucking into the windshield is going to be basically the same thing as tucking into the top here 
like I did on the roof wrap. I have these cool little tucking tools. These little tucking tools are a lifesaver. Um, it really allows you to get deep in there. Spread it open a little bit and then you go in with the credit card or one of these instruments and you just kind of tuck it in there and move right along. You can check out my roof wrap video and I'll show you how I did it here. And I just kind of knocked this out last night. I do have to tuck all the way in to the whole rail on the underside here. So I'll be sure to show you how I tuck it. And uh, yeah, we'll be moving on, baby. Okay, so I was just starting to tuck in the vinyl on this side. This is the small little edge that I have to tuck it in and under. Um, it's very, very tight. It's a very slow, tedious process, as is the whole vinyl wrapping journey and experience. So yeah, I'm gonna trim this back. Pretty much gonna follow the line right where the window trim starts. I kind of use that as my guide. Take note of the technique I am using. It's probably not the best, but it is working. So I'm gonna continue to use it. We're just wrapping it up here. Quarter panel is looking pretty flawless at this point. Got the fender well tucked all nice. Tucked all the way under nicely. I also tucked behind the bumper nicer than I probably should. But check it out. I went all the way down in there. It's probably a little overkill, but I'm happy with the results. Just got to bolt back on the bumper and the tail light. <laughs> 